horse urine, reptile venom, and even fish sperm. Here are brief origin stories for eight medications that may just shock you. Did you know that some 18 million Americans have diabetes and a good majority of those diabetics are type two, where the body loses its ability to turn blood sugar into energy because either it doesn't produce enough insulin or doesn't use it correctly. Type two diabetes is often associated with obesity and can potentially lead to serious health complications like stroke, amputation, kidney failure, heart attacks, heart failure, and so on. Now, what if I told you that one of the most successful ways to control diabetes is from a shocking component, lizard spit. And I'll repeat it again for the people in the back. Lizard spit, not just any lizard, a large venomous lizard found right here in the United States and Mexico. Introducing the Gila monster. I know what you are thinking. There's no way this wild looking reptile is treating chronic health issues like diabetes. Oh, contraire, my friends. Here's what's so cool about it. The Gila monster saliva contains a very important 39 amino acid peptide called Exendin-4. This hormone is almost exactly like a hormone that humans produce called glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 and it's given by way of injection. It works by stimulating the pancreas to secrete insulin when the blood sugar levels are high. Insulin helps move sugar from the blood into other body tissues where it is used for energy. So all in all, it's wild to think it all started with this little cuddly gila mom monster, osteoarthritis. Have you ever seen a rooster's comb? It's the fleshy red mohawk looking growth on the top of the rooster, chicken, or any game fowl type of bird's head. While roosters use this to help cool themselves down, we of the human variety may have had a very different use for this comb. And it all has to do with osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is an inflammatory disease that affects more than 30 million American adults. On a very basic level, it's the most common type of arthritis that happens when joint cartilage breaks down or is damaged. It can be very painful, causing stiffness and reduced function in your joints and even breakdown and changes the bone underneath. All right, so how does one treat this degenerative wear and tear type arthritis? There is a treatment that has been around for decades. It's called visco supplementation or hyaluronic acid injection. Now, you've probably seen hyaluronic acid as an ingredient in skin care or cosmetic products before, but did you know that your body actually produces this clear gooey substance naturally? Yes, this helpful acid is mostly found in your skin and connective tissue and has multiple functions in the body. It helps your skin retain moisture, maintain flexibility, and soothes dry eyes, helps in wound healing, among many other uses. But circling back to the earlier rooster combo, cartilage from the rooster combs contain very high levels of hyaluronic acid. It can be given in a series of injections to patients who are suffering from osteoarthritis. These injections help to not only lubricate the joints, but also decrease their overall pain, increase mobility, and even delays the need for joint replacement surgery. Although hyaluronic acid used to be extracted from the cartilage of the rooster's comb, scientists have thankfully developed a synthetic version that they now used to treat patients hypertension. It's been called a potentially silent killer or at least a precursor and nearly half of the U.S. adults have this issue. Defined as a systolic blood pressure greater than 130 or a diastolic blood pressure of greater than 80. If you're not sure the numbers but are taking medication prescribed by your doctor for hypertension, high blood pressure is very concerning to doctors as it forces the heart to work harder to pump the blood to the rest of the body and damage one's arteries by making them less elastic, potentially leading to heart disease. High blood pressure usually develops over time, and it can happen because of unhealthy life choices, like not getting enough physical activity, or having other health conditions such as diabetes and obesity can also increase the risk of developing high blood pressure. Especially if it runs in your family, this could certainly put you at higher risk. What if I told you that another potentially silent killer may just be the treatment to said scary hypertension? Meet the venomous Brazilian Hararaca Pit Viper. That's right, a medication derived straight from this hair-raising snake. But patients who have hypertension are sometimes given a drug named Captopril. Captopril is an ACE inhibitor that was developed in the 1980s. ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. But simply, ACE inhibitors work by helping to relax veins and arteries so the heart can pump blood more efficiently. 
And Captopril specifically was one of the first ACE inhibitors and it was created using the venom from this deadly snake. Crazy, right? On any other day, one bite from a pit viper like this can cause blistering, bleeding, renal failure, and even death. But now, secured the right way, this snake's venom or the synthetic form nowadays truly contains a secret sauce to help combat hypertension, specifically peptides, which are made up of strings of amino acids and are essentially the building blocks of protein. These peptides found in Captopril act as an ACE inhibitor for the folks with hypertension, as I mentioned before. It has also been used on other serious conditions like heart failure, kidney disease, and is sometimes given to patients who have suffered from heart attacks. You've probably heard of anti-venom, right? For instance, you go hiking and surprise, you get bit by a rattlesnake. I often see these here in Southern California where I work in the emergency department. People come into the hospital needing a high dose of anti-venom. All that being said, have you ever wondered to yourself, how exactly do we get anti-venom? You may be surprised to find out that it's not as cut and dry as you may think. To go back a few years, it was first developed in 1895 using venom from a cobra. However, the anti-venom as we know it now was not available until 1927. First off, donor animals, usually horses, sheep, or even goats are injected with a non-lethal dose of venom. That animal's immune system triggers a response and produces antibodies. These animals typically have a robust immune system and produce powerful antibodies that can bind to the snake venom component. From there, blood is then drawn from the animal and the antibodies are separated from the blood in the plasma. The plasma is concentrated and then purified into high pharmaceutical grade antivenom before being given to patients. Today, there are multiple antivenom treatments available for specific snakes and even spiders. But it's important to know that not every hospital carries it. So if you find yourself bitten by a snake or other venomous critter, make sure that you go to the right medical facility that can truly treat your wound. You don't want to be wasting time when minutes and hours could literally mean life and death when it comes to combating a venomous bite. Okay, disclaimer, this next one is kind of a gross one, but can be necessary for some. Did you know that there is a medication made from pregnant horses urine? <laughs> This is true. You see, when women begin menopause, a period of time that marks the end of their menstrual cycles, they have low estrogen, which causes a variety of symptoms, including changes in metabolism, difficulty sleeping, mood changes, and other problems associated with this. Oftentimes, to help treat some of these issues, a doctor will prescribe estrogen to help boost their levels and alleviate symptoms. This is called hormone replacement therapy. Now, one of these hormone replacement therapy medications is known as Premarin. It is a highly prescribed, orally administered estrogen estrogen that is also available as a topical cream and has been used since 1942. But here's the thing, Premarin comes from mare's urine and mare urine contains high levels of estrogen and is similar to the estrogen that humans produce. Premarin does have some controversy attached to it though. Some ethical concerns have been raised due to the treatment of the mares. There have also been some recent studies showing an increased risk of cancer for patients who were on Premarin. But all that to say, hormone therapy is important for patients that are actually suffering from menopausal type symptoms. This one isn't exactly kosher, but it's very useful in treating patients that have trouble with their pancreas. For example, if a patient is suffering from chronic pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, or some sort of blockage between the pancreas and the intestines, they likely do not have pancreatic enzymes that help with digestion. Why is this a major deal? Well, not only does this affect how your body breaks down food, but the pancreas also makes the hormones insulin and glucagon that control your body's blood sugar level. And one in five cases of severe pancreatitis can result in life-threatening complications like multi-organ failure and could even potentially be deadly. Here's the silver lining. There is a medication to help with this called pancrelipase. Pancrelipase works by replacing the enzymes that your pancreas is lacking and decreases fatty bowel movement. It also improves nutrition by breaking down fats, proteins, and starches into smaller substances that can be absorbed in the intestine. But the million dollar question, where does this pancreas supporting medication come from? To be specific, it comes from the pancreas of pigs. So whether you have a religious aversion or if you have any allergies to pork, you should probably let your doctor know if you suffer from any pancreatic issues if you need this type of medication. Aspirin. This is one of the most common medications found in almost every medicine cabinet on the planet. Aspirin, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug very commonly used to treat pain and swelling, reduce fever, and so on. It's also been used as a blood thinner, helping to prevent strokes and heart attacks. But you may not have known
known about its oh-so-subtle beginning. Around 3,500 years ago, bark from a willow tree was a traditional medicine used by Sumerians, Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, and more for pain relief. Fast forward to the mid-1700s, where an English cleric by the name of Edward Stone was investigating willow bark and its effect on the sick. He gathered some willow bark and left it outside of a baker's oven for about three months, and once dried, would grind it into a powder. He reported in a letter written to the Royal Society that he gave the ground up powder to 50 different people. And with the exception of a few chronically ill patients that may have had malaria, he reported that all his patients' conditions improved. It was later discovered that the crystals isolated from the Willowbrook could produce a stronger compound called salicylic acid. Among the many plant products that have clinical utility, salicylates and aspirin are probably the most broadly used. Estimates suggest that about 100 billion tablets are consumed each year and are used to alleviate pain and other issues. Number one weird places we derive medications from has to go to a heparin reversal agent. And finally, we have crotamine. This origin story of this medication is certainly a bit fishy, but it may just save the life of you or someone you love. All right. Let me paint the full picture here. In a nutshell, heparin is a medication used to prevent blood clots from forming in people who have certain medical conditions or who are undergoing certain medical procedures that increase the risks or increase the chances that clots will form. For instance, during open heart surgery or kidney dialysis. Although it sounds super helpful and it can be, but sometimes excessive bleeding can occur with anticoagulants or blood thinners as they are commonly referred to like heparin. This could be a major issue. So in order to stop the excess of bleeding after say renal dialysis or after open heart surgery, a medication called crotamine sulfate is used to counteract the anticoagulant or blood thinning effect. It acts as an antagonist that neutralizes heparin bleeding complications. Great, right? Well, what if I told you that the goods that make up protamine were derived from salmon sperm? Yes, the swimmers of swimmers, potentially life-saving to the patients who require a reversal of heparin. So long as you don't have a fish allergy. All right, there you have it. Weird places we get medicine from. A shout out to Nucleus Medical Media for their awesome video library and graphics. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.